Hi, this is Rolf from Tesla Owners US and now comes part two to put it all back together after we installed the battery. So you saw the battery there laying in there or sliding in there. Now comes a more difficult part to put it all back together. And it comes after this intro. And guys, when I show you something here on that channel, I need to be convinced of that product. So for Sean's battery that Omnu, uh, what you can buy on the Omnu.com, this battery is in Martina's car since the warranty run out. So it's about four years. And I had a problem with that because, and this comes after that in that next section there is, when there is a portion of there is a threat of the 13 millimeter not different depending where you install it. So you have to watch that and watch that scene there. But since that time the battery is running and running and I save all of the visits to the uh, to the factory or to, to the service center and the payments to deinstall that and reinstall that. It might be cheaper uh, for the service center and maybe they have also a pretty good and fast procedure to do that to take the battery out and put a new battery in. However, it's an unnecessary thing and that can be eliminated by having a battery would last much longer. The lead acid battery is a technology over 100 years old and I think if we, high that, we have that high technology car, we should not have a low technology a 12 volt battery for that. And that's why I installed it and I don't have to do the reinstall. I gotta wait how long that battery lasts. I think it lasts for a real long time. And now comes a portion to put it back together. Okay, so we wanna line up this back this back connection, which is the positive connection into this rail here, mm -hmm. which is the positive connection to the battery, well, that we shimmed upwards. That we want to line up first. Hey. Oh, a little slider slid out. Or your little piece of paper fell out. Yeah, it just slid out. I'm yeah. sliding it back under. That way it'll keep it pressed upwards. Oh, no, it slid out again. Okay, I'll make it a little thicker and then maybe it'll it'll hold tighter. Yeah. Can get you some cardboard if you want. Yeah, small, small piece of cardboard might work. Let's see how this works. And then, yeah, let's slip back out. Huh. I don't know what were they thinking. Then you would never have to replace that battery. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. In Arizona, after two summers, that you're probably okay. Stuff. But it, for the third summer, you're kind of pushing it. You're in the valley. So that's what's about time for you yeah. um, to replace it. Oh, a long pass because this is 2015, it's 2020, it's five years. That's about all you ever get out of a... Yeah. But that car wasn't oh. here most no. of its life, right? It was in San Diego, right? It was in San Diego. Uh, yeah. Nice, yeah. Have yeah, nice yeah. weather. I think the whole car was designed for California. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. No. That's to be fair now. They tested it in cold weather and, yeah. and hot weather. Ah, good job. <laughs> now you've got it. Yeah. So before you tighten the nut all the way down. So yeah, we'll get, get the rest of it. We'll get the rest of it up. secure. This bolt also has to come through there. Yeah, so that one has to come through there. Yeah. We'll, we'll that start the tightening the, that one. On the top of the strap, of the bracket. Yeah. Now you have to put the bracket soon down, right? Yeah. To re-secure the bracket? Yeah. 
There you go. Here's this one. Here's that valve. Uh -huh. Yeah. What's that valve? That's here? for your coolant, uh, oh. for your refrigerant. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, is that the, the refrigerant? That one's the refrigerant, yeah. yeah. There's one on the top of here. It's a little black one. Looks like a bicycle pump valve. Uh -huh. yeah, that's, that's for, for the your air, air right? pressure. Yeah, and you could mm -hmm. manually pressurize your system. Well, I think they actually maybe put it right here. This is the air pressure yeah. one. Yeah, right. That one, yes. Yeah, yes. it looks like a bicycle. Valve cap or car okay. tire valve cap. This is what I changed to my car because it was one leaking. Oh, that was leaking. Yeah, and I put just a uh, just I put in here in between a piece in between. Oh. Uh -huh. Because this one. The valve was leaking. The valve was leaking. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll secure this one in the back. That is securing the, what, also the bracket or is This it? is securing that positive lug oh, connection okay. onto yeah. this rail. That's the bolt that was being pushed up by the piece of cardboard. Yeah, I'm not going to secure the bracket until we get the negative side on as well. Okay. okay. Just so that it has a little bit of flexibility mm -hmm. until then. Just because the negative can get tight. Play, yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. now we'll connect that negative side. Oh, that's hard to film. Yeah, that's gonna be the next film. But I got it. <laughs> Until my hands get in the way. <laughs> yeah, just getting it is difficult. Okay. So now here. Oh, the, that's the adapter. The thing we want to do is if it's if the angle is like this. Uh huh. Um, we want to loosen this 13 millimeter oh. a little bit so that there's some flex to this while we position it and then tighten it down afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to do that over here away from the battery. Oh, that's going to be difficult. So we're just loosening that 13 millimeter right here. Uh -huh. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Cool. Then now it's got a little flexibility to it. And then we'll bring it up here. Thread to the top. But, but your the lithium battery will be empty, right? No. Or no, it's got charge in it. It got charge in it? Yeah. How much does it charge does it ship with? Um uh -oh. typically uh -oh. the car started up again. Yeah, that's okay. Now now that the 12 volt power we're putting the 12 volt back on it, uh -huh. it's gonna start up. Okay. Yeah, that's why there was a little bit of initial sparking oh, as I press this down as well. Uh -huh. It's because the it's getting energized. So now be careful again because now we're dealing with live circuits. Mindful to keep this straight as much as you can with one hand while securing it. Then when you feel it's a nice snug fit, that's good. Now we can go back and tighten this connector. The 13 millimeter. The 13 millimeter. Okay. Now we're gonna make one more connection here, which yep. is the DC-DC converter All right. onto this bus. Oops, let me get that. Shouldn't have any arcing there because we don't have uh, the high voltage activated. Right. If you had this, right. if you had forgotten to just deactivate the high voltage right here, I've we've seen it before where somebody arcs it and yeah. blows this fuse. Right, sure. Yeah, so you want to make sure you don't allow that to be the case. Careful not to touch anything metal there, anyway, because that's yeah. the positive side, right? Yeah. These two uh -uh. are so weird. 
Between your two 13 millimeter bolts, just be careful to know which one was which when you take them off and put them back on the correct side. Because one will fit over the other, but then the other side won't fit. This nut or this nut, either one will fit on this side. But on this side, only this nut will thread into it. That one different will Different threads. Yeah, they're different threads. Yeah. So now you've got your negative side tight, positive sides connected, your DC-DC converter cables back on, and then the tie down is secure. And yeah. the, the bracket is You just need too. to secure the bottom on this side of the bracket, yeah. cover it, and then we just reverse everything and put it all back together. I'll be able to get this in there at this angle now. Mm, yeah, yeah, pulling. Yep, it's good. It's tight. And was there a battery cover of that? Yeah. Yeah. Which it is here. We can put that on next. It's the uh, actually the fuse. Panel cover. Well, a fuse can panel cover. Yeah. There's a wire coming out the back there. This one? Yeah. Well, it goes. Does that go inside there? It's supposed to enter right here. Mm -hmm. In that space. Good. Will oh. that be the it's screwed down or bolted down? It just snaps on? Yeah, this just snaps on. Yeah. Just like that. Right. Now we'll reconnect here. This is the high Make sure connection. it's fully out. Then as you push it in, click it until you see it stick through there. Now right. the car is fully re-woken back up. All right. So just reinstalling. Okay, so now we're gonna put all the parts back together. Once you've got your plastic cover on the fuse panel, you've reconnected your high voltage interlock loop, all the connections are secure, battery is happy. And the bracket's tight. And the bracket's tight. Yep. So this piece will go in first. Line up that side, and then the other side has a little more give to it, because they did it slotted. Before you start securing that though, this rubber piece goes on the bottom. That first really easy to access bolt, go ahead and thread your one nut back onto there. Just hand tight. Then on the left side, you should see the next one. I'm going to take my gloves off just so I can reach. Because your door was open and the cooling stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for turning that off. If you put in your hand just like this, you should be able to thread it on pretty well. Do it enough that you see the rubber starting to crest, but not so much that you force it through the rubber because it's it's rubber, so it's soft, so you could keep going. Yeah. Then you can use a cordless drill to finish this one. Same thing, just enough so it starts to crest, and then do the uh, start the other two by hand, and then finish them with a cordless drill.
Oh, saw it tighten up. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even, there's no way I can even see that in there. Let me go this side. That one I can. Okay, so we got all four of those on the ductwork. Yeah, now the next piece of the plenum can go in. Then this one will have two bolts that secure it. Plus there's two clips at the top there too, actually. Yeah, and Helps the... you should get it lined up on the bottom so it creates a seal, uh -huh. and then bring the top up and clip it in place. The and top then we'll clips in, yeah, right there. Have right. a good seal to it, and then you put the two 10 millimeter bolts back in. And that's just holding the two pieces of ductwork together. Yeah. Wow, hands too big. <laughs> you need children. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, now is when you can put your filter back in place. Okay. Air flow up because the air is going to come in and we'll suck in through there. Got it. At this point, you want to be mindful of this tag. Yeah. Yes. And make sure that it's up and not down. Yeah. Hidden. And it sticks out later. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now this part goes down. There's the edge, bottom edge of the windshield that yeah. you press into. You need a bolt as well here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little, it's a plastic uh, piece this that was missing. Plastic bolt things. The little like press in ones. Ah, yeah. uh, the little like, like this one, clips like on this side. On this yeah, side it's yeah, there. Yeah. It's not a bolt, but it's just a... Yeah, paper. they were missing, but then we found one inside of the air plenum. Oh yeah? Yeah, it was just like sitting in there when we <laughs> took it apart. So, we have one. Um, yeah, we can, yeah, one so we one. can put it. Yeah, okay. Okay, now it's all clips and everything is on that side. Okay. Okay. So we can put it back in the camera, yeah. Okay. So the remaining pieces are on this side here? Yep. So you just line your tub up, and then we'll secure all the 10 uh, millimeter, or just two 10 millimeters on this one actually, and then yeah. four 13 millimeter. Do you have to take the wire off out there first? Not on this one. Yeah, remember on yours is different. On mine is different? Yeah, so that's what yours I'm saying. Is, yours is attached to the tub. It's attached to the tub on this one. See yeah. how it's like a pocket that's just there? See, it's already through. Oh, because they got a big square cut out. On mine, it was not the place. No. In mine, I had to grab it out. There. This is the first time I've seen one of this age yeah. done like this. And you can also see some irregularities with the way that this is cut. So yeah. uh -huh. somebody modified this to make it do this uh -huh. because that's not how it should be. Like that's that's a frail. Yeah, that's like not a machine cut from the factory. This no. is somebody with a hacksaw. Yeah. You got lucky because it's a lot easier this way, but yeah. it's really weird that that was done. Maybe the guy who changed the battery. <laughs> yeah. You all got tired of that. Yeah. It's a mod done at the Cormac, California is where the, oh, right. okay. where the uh, service center is. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ironically. <laughs> so you have four 13 millimeter bolts. Secure this top. And then two. And the tens in the front.
can go back in. Or the top extension can go back in. These are all going to be 10 millimeter. Quite a lot of them. Yep. This is actually in York. They are not consistent about these things, but in this car there are two that are longer than the other three. Uh -huh. So the two that are longer go in the top, and then the other three go in the bottom, if you want it to be exactly the same. <laughs> Probably unnecessary to have it exactly the same. But I no. think they got away with that as well, so they always have the same size bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another design for manufacturability issue. Yeah, later on it's different. There's four of these. This car, one of them stuck behind on the plastic, so I'll just leave it there and put it in after we put the top in. Mm -hmm. I have to put the liner in. Got felt liners on the sides. This one will go down here just because it didn't come with it. Can you get it tight enough, just finger tight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah these plastic knobs you just yeah, quite a bit finger of tight. Torque on it, you leverage on it. Yeah. Yeah, I have a net there. Yeah. My net's somewhere. Yeah, it's it was on there. I took it off when we were. Then tuck this under. Another rubber there. Yeah. And this, the better, this earlier models have the two separate pieces. So when you tuck it in, it usually ends up looking pretty good. Yeah. On the later ones, when you tuck them in, they never quite fit exact again. And so they'll have like a little bunch up here or something like that. Just slightly irritating for, for me. Yeah, you want, yeah, you want it to look exactly right. On these ones it will, on those ones it won't. I think the, the older models are better quality, huh? In some ways, in some ways, yeah. They made, in some ways they made a lot of design improvements along the way. Yeah. I think I would have rather had the, I'd rather lose some of the tub extension space and have the battery right there. <laughs> yeah. The top, top extension space is never used for me. There's a bag in there which fits exactly in there. And I have a bag in there with all charging equipment and tools and... and, and, and uh, yeah, that's good. A little toolbox fits A in little there. toolbox for on the road, right? Yeah. So now this, like I said, all these parts never come off the way they should. So you just do your best to put it back in and tuck over the top. And it'll pretty much stay in place. Even if those aren't as they should be. It's like double-sided foam tape. Yeah, and you can hear it like try to restick and then immediately yeah. pull back off. So now I'll put the carpet in and this plastic liner up front. Here's where you gotta make sure you plug these in. Connections. Excuse, connections. They won't fit in the wrong spots, so. Well, that was good design. Just put them in where they fit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
there are some spots like in the doors mm -hmm. where they have them that they can fit in the same spot and it's like come on well, you better mark them when you take them off just get them back in the right spot should be a little there's a christmas tree uh push thing that goes in here to secure that the Christmas tree? They're Christmas called, tree. They're called Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah, because of the little ridges that come up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you show that again? It's a, it's oh. a plastic uh, fastener. Oh, okay. It's just to push on. Usually those things are designed to push on once. <laughs> yeah. Once you take them off, it kind well, of ruins And that's them. where these earlier ones, a lot of them had 8 millimeter bolts right here. Uh -huh. And that's what held them into this spot. That would probably be better. And that was better. But then... I don't know, yours is different than, than what one expects on this particular vintage. Don't know why. If you're really clever, I could probably put in a bolt in there. Yeah. And then net, yeah. Com net comes on. Ist das nicht nett? <laughs> and now we put the, the liner back on. First, you just gotta make sure you put this one on first. Yep. And then those ones, the order doesn't matter as much, mm -hmm. but the first one has to go on this one. And make sure that the clips are in the right spots, because so my, my question is, why didn't they design a permanent 12 volt inverter or converter, DC, DC converter to 12 volt and have the main battery covering that? Uh, so the reason is that you will kill the main battery. You, you need it, the, they use the, so they actually did exactly what you're describing early on, the earliest roadsters. Yeah. They did that. But they, they found that what it created was a situation where you did not have a sacrificial 12 volt mm -hmm. to protect the car if someone were to let it totally drain. So 12 volt always needs to be there mm -hmm. to yes. keep the car's mm -hmm. brains online. Yeah. Yes. And so if you left the car for a long time and you did it that way, you would always be supplying energy. And if you parked the car with almost no energy left in the pack, you would have to kill the pack in order to keep the brains online. And so you would end up with dead main packs mm -hmm. because of somebody like parking their car for a month and going on vacation instead of having just a dead 12 volt battery. Yeah. So they had a few that they had to replace early on. I think they had to replace a few battery packs that went bad mm -hmm. because of that. And then they realized, oh yeah, we need, we need a 12 volt battery. That's, that's what needs to die when somebody does this, not the big battery. Uh -oh. Should we do a test? Does the car start up? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the air conditioner. <laughs> yeah, now is not a good time to say, oh, we gotta put a different one in. <laughs> uh -huh. Start over. No. So there's no indicator on the dashboard that tells you what the voltage level of your battery is. is the car does know what it is, but the car it doesn't, tell you. doesn't tell you. Yeah, yeah unless you're in diagnostics mode. Yeah. And then it actually does monitor the 12 volt uh, voltage and also the current going in or out of it okay. at all, all the time. So that's kind of how it assesses the health of the battery too. Mm -hmm. Is like how, if you start applying a little bit of current and the, tr the voltage shoots way up, it's not absorbing any current, so this right. battery is shot. So it can assess batteries that way. Um, so now you have to put your tools together. Huh? Yeah. Okay, close the lid. Is it? That's the process. Okay, hey, let's. Okay, 
first of all, thank you for Sean to have that no installation. Uh, where can I get this battery? It's at least you. Omu.com. Omu.com. O-H-M-M-U.com. It's really small on the circuit. Yeah. O-H-M-M-U.com. Oh, uh, you know, it can be a <laughs> uh, Yeah. So, and that is a battery what lasted in my year since years already. And this all, all deal with that, uh, t taking it in and out and, and all this, uh, you can save that. So you don't have to... Uh, do that every year or every other year in Arizona it's probably at least every other year yeah. and your battery lasts much longer a lot of much longer. there are a lot of advantages as you heard for that 12 volt battery we've been we've been installing them for almost five years now we don't have any batteries that have failed from from old age the only so years we've had so far are just like if you initial install with some cosmetic damage or Broken terminals for shipping, something like that. But okay. We haven't had any warranty so there, there's exchanges. no warranty returns yet. For no like, warranty exchanges yet. Not yet. Yes. Not for yeah. not for the longevity. Anyways. Yeah, that's what we want. We want that the battery lasts very long and that we never have to get to that uh, cricket yeah. cricket awful, place there again. Awful, awful, awful on these first model S's. The mm -hmm. later ones, it's a little better, but it's still kind of a pain. It's still more than you should have to do. Yeah. You still have to remove the whole tub. You got to remove the frunk. You got yeah. to move some brackets. The Model 3 and Model Y finally have it in a very easy spot. We do Good. a Model 3 or a Model Y, it takes 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. So one, one, one or two things comes out of the way and then you have access. I think they learned something from that. <laughs> yeah, they made it easier to access. But the X is still a challenge too. The X is not as easy as the 3 and the Y. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, thank you for that. You also save a little bit of weight. Because this heavy lead acid battery, it, it has lead in there and acid in there. So lead is not good for your health and acid is not good for your skin, <laughs> right? So that's 26 pounds and the battery is under 10 pounds, about 9, about nine pounds. 9 pounds, but yeah. Okay, but uh, you just only have to sell to people who had lead acid. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, so and you can get them for Model X, S, Three, y, y, three, and Roadster yeah, as well. We have all, all yeah. Teslas. Yeah. All Teslas. Okay, support. thank you very much. And if you like that, thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you the next time for a good installation video. Bye bye. Bye bye, John. Yeah, now. Have a good one. Good luck. See you.